Hi everyone, I'm Dan Elliott, and welcome to the DokiPen channel. And in this video, we'll be taking the hit location that we retrieved previously, and use that to do some UV manipulation to get our damage hit to draw in the right location under the crosshair. So the first thing we're going to do is to modify the brush material to provide an input parameter, and that allows us to scale and offset its position that it draws within the UV 0 to 1 space. And this means that it won't just draw a damage hit in the center, but anywhere we want to, according to what attribute we feed to the parameter. For the scaling, we can do that the way we've done previously, by multiplying the UVs. The UV coordinates are given to us, which in the case of a render texture, are just like operating on a square region with UVs that go from 0 to 1, in both horizontal and vertical directions. And then with these UVs, we can subtract a vector quantity of 0.5 for U and V, which will center the 0 to 1 range, and shift it to the minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 range. It's probably a good idea to also clamp the UVs so that we don't get any undesired repetition issues. Then we can divide by some multiplication constant to scale the UVs around the origin. And lastly, we can add back the 0 0.5 to put the center back where it was. This scale factor, which is 2, has made this texture appear twice as large, and 8 is 8 times as large, and then 1 sets it back to default. And we can go smaller too, like 0.5 or 0.12. Let's try this size as our damage splat. But before we go on to do anything else, I want to take a quick look at the damage texture, because I've noticed something which might be an issue. Because we made this texture from a texture grid of various frames of animation, there's some of one of the other frames leaking through the border. This might cause some streaking issues when we scale and clamp the UVs, and then draw into the render target using this. So I'll actually go right back to the original demonstration material where we created that texture, and fix it at the source. I'll make an offset to the parameter which centers the explosion, and I'll tweak that until the other frame doesn't appear. Let's save that and I'll clear and redraw the original render target using the blutility. Now we can resave a new static texture, and we'll delete the old one, and let's force delete that one, and the new static texture seems to be good now. Let's go back to our brush material and hook up the explosion image we just created. And now if we hit play, then when we hit the mesh, the size of the hit looks about right for some weapon damage. But the fact remains that it's not where we aim the weapon. So to fix this, we're going to be finding out the value of the UVs on the part of the mesh that we hit, and feed that as an offset into the brush material to cause the drawing of the explosion texture to occur at that point. The way that we find out what the UV value of the part of the mesh that we hit is, is that we can take the output of the line trace, which is this out hit object, and feed that into a find collision UV node. And just to see what we're getting out of this, let's print the value returned. So we'll print a string and feed in the UV value. And now when we hit play, we can see that the value 0, 0 is being given to us, which shouldn't be happening because we're definitely hitting the mesh in an area where the UV should be non-zero, especially for this plane, which we know has valid and continuous UVs. And the clue for the reason this is happening is that there's a warning that has popped up in the editor. The warning is that we've used the fine collision UV node, but that a certain setting hasn't been enabled in the project settings, which the warning says is required for this to work. So we'll go and enable that setting. In the project settings, the easiest way to find it is to type UV into the filter, and the one that pops up is the one that we want, which is this support UV from hit results checkbox. If we enable that, then the editor will need to restart, which will take a few minutes probably on your computer, but I'll edit that out. And when it comes back and we hit play, we can see that it's still giving 0, 0 as the return hit UV. And why could that be happening? 
The answer to that lies on the line trace node. We need to enable the trace complex setting. This will cause the line trace to check for collisions using the full representation of the mesh rather than a simple approximation. This will have a small cost associated with it though, but that's something you'll have to take into account if you want to use this feature in your game. Now, hitting play, we can see that we're getting valid values back for the UVs that make sense. So we need a way to get this UV value and feed it into the brush material so that it knows how to offset the explosion texture that it's drawing. If we go into the material, we can create a vector parameter. These parameter nodes allow blueprints to control values going into the material. And let's call it UV transform. And because it comes in as a 4D vector, we need to use a component mask to turn it into a 2D vector. Then we'll subtract 0.5 from it to turn it into a zero centered UV value, where if the mesh object is hit in the area where the UV is 0.5.5, which in this case is the center of the plane, then it will make that offset become zero, zero. This might be a good time to wrap this section in a comment block. Then we need to subtract that from the original UVs to add that as a final offset, which will bring the UVs up so that the texture will be sampled with its center at the hit location. I'll also wrap the scaling section in a comment block. Lastly, for this to work, we need to actually feed in that UV value to the vector parameter. For that to work, we need to create a new dynamic material instance when the game starts. This is basically a light copy of the material, which allows us to change parameters on the fly. It uses the base material as a parent and exposes the parameters that the material contains to be controlled by blueprints. In the true branch of the hit detection, Use a create dynamic material instance node, and we can set the brush material as the parent. The name I chose for the original example brush at the beginning of the module is actually a bit too similar to the one I want, so I'll go and rename that one so that I don't keep getting confused between the two when they show up in the list. Now I want to set the instance to have the material brush as the parent. Now I'll create the set vector parameter value node, which will do what it says and set that parameter on the instance we just created. The instance is the target material. The parameter is called UV transform. And the value we feed it is gonna be the UV value from the mesh, but it has to be converted to a vector as the set vector parameter node only takes vectors as input. And it's not working. No big deal. It's only because we forgot to hook up the rest of our blueprint execution. We also have to remember that we aren't drawing the original brush material asset anymore, but the dynamic instance of that, which will be created after the game has begun playing. Now we have the damage applying where we have aimed, and that's great. And at this point, we've achieved quite a lot without too much work. There are now several challenges to tackle though. One, we have to take into account what happens when we hit other objects and how we apply damage to them and how we manage multiple materials and render targets across all those objects. You can see how hitting other objects here is affecting the plane we've been testing on, whereas we don't want that to. And the second issue is that the damage is being drawn at the right place, but the previous hit is being wiped out. Every time we hit the plane, the previous one is disappearing and we're only seeing the latest one. We can actually fix that right now with one simple change. You might remember me saying that there was a technical reason why we had a blank render target that we then negated to mean no damage in a previous video. And that's because we can use the blend mode of the material to accumulate damage by setting it to additive. This will add the drawing of the brush material to the previous state of the render target. And since the accumulation only works in the direction from zero up to one, we have to interpret the texture that way, as there's no subtractive blend mode. Then it might have been possible to start with a default render target value of one and reduce it, but this way it works out fine, and all it means is having that one negate node. Having this accumulation mode is really handy actually, because otherwise we would have had to have two textures and ping pong between them and draw one into the other to accumulate the results. So this saves texture memory and makes the material much simpler. 
So here's the accumulation working. And lastly, one thing which is an issue which isn't immediately obvious is that we're creating a new material instance for the brush every time we hit the mesh, and there isn't really any need to. This can be shown by printing the name of the material instance object itself and see that it's incrementing. So in the next video, we'll be fixing the need to create dynamic material instance every hit, and we'll do that by storing it as a variable in the character blueprint itself. And then we'll go on to see how we can have multiple meshes in the world, have their own damage render target, and unique material instance per mesh. So see you then.